Communism is too powerful. I'm not saying that, but there is a game that is saying that. So this is about the game Victoria 3. This is a socio-political strategy game that essentially simulates reality when it comes to uh, politics and how it impacts societies and different ways of approaching things. Well, apparently the best way to play Victoria 3 is to be a communist. <laughs> so I'm going to get to these details. The uh, There's gamers, some uh, some gamers complaining about this, but I'll also get to a comment from the developer and why he uh, is claiming this is the way it is. But first here, this uh, story broken by uh, Kotaku here, Victoria 3 players think communism is too overpowered. Apparently giving workers more disposable income is a winning strategy in Paradox's economic simulation game. So before I get to more details here, this is the game is uh, apparently very deep, very complex. I have never played a Victoria game. I have played other simulation style games, a lot more basic ones. But um, this apparently is like a lot of spreadsheets involved. Uh, to go back to this, though, you can see, you know, you could put different, I, I assume by looking at this and by the review I watched on this game, you could put different emphasis on, say, nationalism, egalitarianism, uh, labor movement, uh, anarchism. So all different, uh, you know, approaches here. And you can see how it plays out in your little world here and across uh, uh, across societies. So, yeah, um, I'll link to this below the video if you want to check out more in the game. There's also, if you look up Victoria 3 Review, you'll see many of those uh, reviews on YouTube as well. But let's get to why this is so powerful or what is happening here. So Victoria 3 is a political simulation game that plays like accounting software. And currently, apparently, the game's numbers agree with the so-called radical left that communism is the most economically efficient government system. Victoria 3 players have taken to the internet to complain that there aren't any other ways of playing that are better than Marxism. Victoria 3 is just a simulation game, but it kind of makes me wonder if overpowered communism has any basis in real life or not. So going on here, they write, One Redditor summarized their take with the title, Current Communist Meta is Overpowered. Capitalist playstyles, they suggest, are too inefficient. The bosses at the top of Victoria 3 capitalist societies get high pay, while workers get very low pay. But in a Victoria 3 communist economy, worker cooperatives ensure that all capitalist wealth is turned over to the workers. As a result, their high purchasing power allows them to spend more money in the economy, which increases economic demand. This leads to higher living standards, which attracts more immigration. Another big boost. Quote, it's just so easy, the player concludes. <laughs> now, I will get to a fair criticism of what is happening in the game here, because there is a fair criticism here to, to, uh, to mention. But look, this is, I don't know, maybe something worth attempting. Maybe putting more wealth into the hands of the workers, the ones that are actually generating the capital for capital owners, maybe that's a better way to go about things. Worker cooperatives, maybe a better way, at least when, especially when it comes to mass production, uh, I would imagine is a much more efficient and effective way, not only for the individuals that, you know, are within the worker co-op, but for society generally to have that sort of power in the hands of workers. I just think it's, it's a purely positive thing. But let me first get to... Um, before I get to more here, the uh, developer's reaction to this. So this is game designer Mikkel Anderson of uh, Paradox saying here, quote, we did not plan for these effects to work out in this way, said Anderson. Rather, we just implemented the mechanics the way we understood them. And this is the result. Chances are good some of these effects could be balanced a bit better, which is something we will work on going forward, but the core dynamics won't change. Instituting a distribution of wealth that encourages a demand-driven economy is one perfectly valid way of playing Victoria 3. One other thing to keep in mind is that while Victoria 3 is an ambitious simulation, it is not a complete simulation. There are currently no distinct mechanics modeling corruption or cronyism, foreign economic influence beyond trade, or direct interference in another nation's politics, all of which could help make the 19th century communism seem a bit less appealing than it does in the current meta. Perhaps that is something we will see more of in the future. So, two points worth mentioning here. They didn't purposely make communism super strong. That's just the way it is because of how it would be implemented in a perfect society, in a perfect world. I'm mentioning that because it is worth bringing up here that it isn't easy to put power in the hands of workers. And that is because of what is not in this game. 
corruption, cronyism, uh, influence, uh, foreign economic influence beyond trade, interference in another nation's politics. These are all reasons why we have not seen more power put into the hands of workers and less power or power taken away from those at the top of society. This is a fair complaint. And that said, though, <laughs> again, if you just implement, if you are able to implement the system without any sort of interference from either people at the top of society or other countries, then it does appear that in this world, in a perfect simulation, that it would, in fact, be the best way to go about um, uh, structuring a society. A bit more here. So some players suggested that one reason such in-game tactics are so effective is that developments like worker cooperatives and multiculturalism are unrealistically easy to implement, which I think is a fair criticism, as I just mentioned. They weren't opposed to these phenomena being overpowered, but thought that it was unrealistic to achieve them with one click of a button. I think that is fair. Last thing here. So some, this is, <laughs> this is so funny. So because people um, are, are, some people are, are bothered by this, some modders are actually taking things into their own hands. There are Victoria 3 mods on Steam that will improve the viability of ethno-state play styles or give strategic depth to subsistence farming. This is all incredibly funny to me because not all economic systems are equally productive in real life. There's simply no way to make subsistence farming somehow more productive than capitalism or even feudalism. If capitalists didn't have to pay to house workers in one place or pay for immigration visas, then they wouldn't. But they do these things because it's more profitable to run companies a certain way. So I just want to give a shout out here to um, the uh, writer of this piece. That is uh, C.C. Zhang. So very good to uh, <laughs> see a game like this that is willing to really dive into the realities around these different systems and see how they interact with each other, see what is the best way to go about things. Again, I think based on the way they've implemented and according to all reviews, this is a very well-reviewed game. It's very in-depth. It is very accurate to real life, minus the lack of cronyism, the lack of foreign inter uh, interference or, or influence, which of course would play into, um, as I said, not making it so easy to uh, have a capitalist or a communist society. But um, check this game out. If you're into these style of games, again, it is, you know, very stat heavy, very data driven, spreadsheety. If you're super into this kind of thing, then uh, I think this appears to be a game that is worth playing.